Happy weekend from Fexture Life. If you've been too busy to keep up on the latest in the games we cover, or are looking for a refresher, we've got your back. Let's take a look at the comings and goings across the Fexture Life Wiki Night. Speaking the time, Sony CEO Sean Layden had some interesting comments about what we can expect from Sony during E3. During the interview, Layden said that the resurgence of the console, specifically the PS4, is drawing in many different types of games as well as more traditional Japanese creators. He said the following, I think a lot of Japanese developers lost their way chasing the mobile games yen, if you will, but they're coming back to console in a major way. And speaking of, we'll have some big announcements at E3 in that precise vein. Hmm, very interesting. We know that rumors have been circulating recently about Bloodborne 2 getting a reveal, and we also know Deep Down is somewhere out there in hiding. With those games developed by big Japanese studios at From Software and Capcom, it's certainly possible that these are games he is intimating as announcements of both, or either, would be huge AAA reveals. What are your thoughts on the hints left for us? What Japanese games would you like to see revealed at E3 next week? Sound off in the comments. This week marked the release of Morrowind, the next chapter in the Elder Scrolls Online. This DLC represents the largest landmass expansion released to date for the MMO from Zenimax Online and transports players back to the locations we first explored during the events of the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind. We've put together a launch day guide on the blog to help you prep for your first steps in this new land. To help you navigate all the new content, we have the wiki prime of everything you need from new sets to breaking down all of the changes with the accompanying base game patch. Check out our Morrowind Patch Explained video to give the head start you need right away. A new patch has been released from Neo, the action RPG from developer Team Ninja that is a samurai era romp that fuses the gameplay of Ninja Gaiden with the Dark Souls series. This particular patch is more minor than past versions and addresses some critical bug fixes. You can check the brief notes on the wiki. It's short, sweet, and right to the point, just how we like our patches. Neo arrived on the scene this year as a surprise hit and has seen some recent DLC releases with more to come. Keep checking back with us for more. Sony has revealed that Horizon Zero Dawn, the open world action RPG from Guerrilla Games, has sold 3.4 million copies since launch earlier this year in the PS4. The game hit over 2.5 million units in its first two weeks from when it launched at the end of February. Post launch, it's continued some strong selling momentum and has become a smash first party success for the PS4. It merged open world action focused gameplay and exploration with a strong storytelling narrative and landed it squarely in the pantheon of great PlayStation games. As a result, the Killzone developer has solidified their stature in gaming and laid the potential foundation for a new mega franchise like fellow PlayStation exclusive Uncharted. Horizon Zero Dawn is the perfect type of game to spend a summer, so if you're joining the ranks for some mech monster hunting, be sure to check out our great collection of launch day guides to help you as well as our incredibly in-depth trophy guide to make sure you leave no stone unturned or untossed. BioWare has released the notes for an upcoming patch to Mass Effect Andromeda. In addition to the standard litany of bug fixes, the patch addresses two big bugaboos via fan feedback, character creation, and romance. Two new heads were added, one male and one female, as well as a new complexion option and a greater range of available skin tones. All hairstyles for both sexes have been unlocked, and they've added a new bald option. Players will now also be able to change their looks mid-game while on the Tempest. You can also now choose to keep the default Alec, rather than having his appearance be based on your custom writer. Scott Ryder can now pursue Jaw as a romance option. Scott did not have a same-sex squad made available as a romance option, nor could the achievement for completing three romances be achieved with only male same-sex partners. As the Angara have expressed their fluidity in how they perceive gender, according to Bioware, it was a natural fit to pair Scott with Jaw if desired. Check the full notes on the wiki for the nitty gritty. In a bizarre turn of events, thieves have made off with some early files of Cyberpunk 2077, the upcoming open world RPG by CD Projekt Red of the Witcher series. In a brazen move, the thieves have demanded ransom from the developer. They issued a statement addressing the matter on Twitter. In the statement, the developer has refused to pay the ransom, saying the documents are old and largely unrepresentative of the current vision for the game. Still, if you're looking forward to playing Cyberpunk 2077, it will be best to avoid any information not coming directly from CD Projekt Red. When the time is right, you'll hear about Cyberpunk 2077 from us, officially. We haven't seen much of the game since its announcement, but know it's in extensive development. 
It would be a shame if our first looks were leaked content that isn't even relevant or representative of the game, especially under illicit means. The game is scheduled to release sometime in the future for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Warner Brothers and Monolith have released a new trailer for Middle Earth Shadow of War that introduces the story in the upcoming action RPG that is the sequel to Shadow of Mordor. In the trailer, the story follows the events involving Talion and Celebrimbor as they work together to harness the power of the ring in order to create a resistance army against the coming forces of Sauron and the Nazgul. You will infiltrate Mordor and work to bring down the forces of evil as you become the Bright Lord. Shadow of War was recently delayed beyond its August release and will now launch for the PS4, Xbox One, and PC worldwide on October 10th. Check out our full preview of the game to learn more about how the game is changing beyond the first entry. Publisher Devolver Digital and developer Slowclap have announced that Absolver's closed beta registrations are now open. If you would like to get in on the action before it releases on August 29th for the PS4 and PC, you can sign up by visiting their website. Registrations will be accepted until Friday, June 16th, with the session set to begin on June 19th. This test session will be PC only via Steam. Game controllers are fully supported and recommended. Afterwards, you'll receive a feedback form by the end of the test, and a dedicated Discord channel will be available for chatting with fellow players during the beta. The online combat RPG pits players against each other as they master a variety of fighting styles and customize different attacks in their combat deck. Players can take on the role of mentor or student and learn new moves and styles from each other. We're getting up close and personal with the Absolver during E3 next week and we'll be bringing you our impressions. 2K Games and Fire Axis have teased an upcoming big announcement for XCOM 2 during the PC gaming show next Monday at E3. It is likely one of two things, either a new official mod like The Long War or it's a new DLC expansion, either of which will likely introduce new weapons, missions, and more. No matter what, it's something that fans of the series should be excited for as the game was a successful follow-up to the first reboot from the Civilization developer. All will be revealed at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time next Monday at the PC Gaming Show. We're looking forward to seeing what's behind the curtain. Focus Home Interactive and Dot Not Entertainment have released a new trailer for Vampire, their upcoming action RPG where you take on the role of Dr. Jonathan Reed, a recently turned vampire in London during the Spanish flu epidemic after World War I. They have announced that the game will release in November of 2017, with no exact date as of yet. The trailer shows off some of the slick and moody atmosphere of the game, as well as gives a look at the vampiric combat skills you'll be using in the game. Pre-orders are available now and net you the following bonuses. Two DLC weapons, the Dragon Bane and the Barker, and the Dark Physician Suit. So we got a new look at the game and a time frame for release, tis the season. We'll be getting a better look at the game next week at E3, and we'll be sure to bring you more insights on it, so keep checking back with us. On the heels of last week's Elix cinematic trailer that announced the game's launch date for October 17th on PS4, Xbox One, and PC, THQ Nordic and Piranha Bytes have released a gameplay trailer for the open-world RPG that blends sci-fi and fantasy together. They certainly know how to make a trailer with attitude. The land of Elix is a world consumed with the pursuit of a mysterious substance that arrived with the meteor that brought devastation, but also the promise of magic for those that survive. The people who have survived have separated into factions, all bent on controlling the new resource. Elix is going to be in attendance at E3 next week, and we're looking forward to seeing how the game has progressed since we went hands-on with the pre-alpha version during last E3. Fans of the Final Fantasy series, of which there are a few, will be happy to know that Square Enix has announced the City of Final Fantasy NT for a 2018 release. The game is a PS4 version of the arcade-only The City of Final Fantasy, which is developed by Koi Tecmo Studio Team Ninja of Ninja Gaiden and Neo fame. Many have hoped for a console release of the RPG spin-off Combat Arena, and now their wishes have been granted, for PS4 owners at least. The game is a collaboration between Square Enix and Team Ninja to make the new port possible. It'll be playable at E3 2017, and you can check out some lovely new screenshots on the blog until then. Start planning your squads and setup. The annual Mega Convention E3 is upon us next week, and the anticipation for what will be seen and revealed is building to a fire. With tons of games both confirmed and rumored to be there, the week is always a whirlwind of announcements and hands-on impressions for the next wave of hit games. Once again, Us at Factual Life will be on site in LA with first-hand accounts of everything that goes on, as well as closed-door game demos with developers and publishers. 
Check out our schedule on the blog to see where we're going to be and who we're going to see day by day, along with some helpful links of past coverage to help you get a better idea of what to expect. Be sure to stay glued to our blog, as well as our Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, forums, and our Discord channel for up-to-the-minute updates on all the happenings of the week. We'll be sure to have great information and great entertainment in good measure. Let's see if our predictions for E3 2017 come true. We've gotten pretty good at this fortune-telling stuff. What are you most excited to see? Let us know what you think in the comments. The Metroidvania genre of gaming is making a comeback. This 2D adventure genre, sometimes within an RPG framework, was made popular by the obviously named Metroid and Castlevania series of games of old, which featured a sprawling world that would gradually unlock the further you progress. As the years went on and taste changed, the genre fell out of favor, with game development shifting towards 3D. However, recently the 2D Metroidvania is experiencing a resurgence, if not a boon. So, what's behind this resurgence, and why will it continue to thrive? Check out our feature piece on the blog that explores the topic. The Metroidvania, for many, was our first experience with hardcore gaming, and in some ways, it reached the pinnacle of the core experience early. Its strict and tight focus on gameplay creates an immersive and gratifying experience that is a refreshing change from the increasingly common one-hour-long tutorials without compromising on difficulty. Check out some of the previews we did this week on Unformed and Ashes of Creation. Unformed has some potential to be yet another entertaining entry in the resurgent Metroidvania genre of games, but right now it's in a bit of a raw state. So much of it is very promising, just unpolished, and that's understandable given its very early stages. What's encouraging is the foundation that it's already laid out. Similar to fellow raw but intriguing crowdfunding success Hellpoint, Unformed has the potential to develop into a very satisfying 2D combat and exploration experience if it gets some more time and resources devoted to it. It's tough to resist the obvious irony in the name because the game itself is very unformed. This one will be worth checking out as it takes further shape. Visit their Kickstarter page to check the demo out for yourself. Ashes of Creation is one of the most promising MMOs to be unveiled. But as always with MMOs, managing promises and execution are going to be crucial. And that's before you introduce the human element of thousands or millions of players. With this much freedom, the player population is going to require some responsive support to keep the game balanced. They certainly raise the hopes and resources to do so. If they can nail it and fight the disillusionment that is creeping through MMO fans, it will be an impressive achievement for the genre and will attract a ton of players looking for the next big MMO experience. And that's a wrap for the Weekend Wikis. We're looking forward to another great week of gaming fun. Don't forget to check out our VIP program for some exclusive supporter benefits, and budding writers should take advantage of our Become an Author initiative. Thanks for a great week, and as always, keep checking in with us for news, reviews, YouTube streams and videos, and general wiki goodness. Follow us on social media for all the latest and greatest. The more followers we get, the larger the army of the Fexus grows.